Be asking yourself, I set a goal, but then I never actually really go all the way through, right? Is anyone asking yourself that? Okay, so there's a few reasons why. One of the main reasons is that we have, here's your little brain lesson. Okay, we have three parts of the brain. We have the, the prefrontal cortex, which is our thinking brain. It's the brain that's working right now as you're listening to me and processing what I'm saying. That's your prefrontal cortex. That's the part of your brain that's listening and processing and thinks and, and it's like, it's, it's out there and the, you know, reacting with the world and stuff like that. Then you have um, the, the limbic system or the, um, the, the, the second brain, which is part of the limbic system, which is your emotions. Okay, so that's like your emotional brain. Then there's the third part of your brain, which is the reptilian brain. Okay, now your reptilian brain is the oldest brain. This is where you have built habits from when you were a baby. Okay, this part of your brain has been building habits from when you were a baby. This, this part of your brain likes predictability. This part of your brain um, avoids fear. This part of your brain is your comfort zone. Um, this part of your brain is what's probably, not probably, is what's keeping you safe. It's keeping you out of fear, out of harm's way, which is great, right? It's our survival mechanism. It's how we survive. But at the same token, this reptilian part of your brain is now creating these habits that are super comfortable and that's why it is so difficult sometimes to you, for you to create new goals and new habits because the reptilian brain does not like change at all at all so you might be fighting with yourself do you ever find yourself being like i really want to achieve this goal i'm going to wake up every day at 5 a.m and i'm going to be this person i'm going to be like a rock star i'm going to do this and that and blah 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 right you have all these things and these creations that you're happening in the, the prefrontal cortex and it's creating this whole thing and then you and then there's this other part that just is like no i just want to be exactly where i am i want to be comfy i don't want to get out of my comfort zone and I wanna stay where I am, right? So you have this constant inner battle with yourself. Can anyone relate to that? Can anyone relate to that at all? If you can, type a two in the chat. Type a two in the chat, okay? Because we can all relate to that, right? We can totally all relate to that. So part of creating new goals is just knowing this, just knowing this, right? Knowing this. And so what's what the problem is, right, is then let's say we make that goal and we say we're gonna get up at 5 a.m. every day and we're gonna go for the run and we're gonna meditate and we're gonna do this entire morning process thing, you know, and we have this whole thing. And then we uh, get there in the morning and we just sleep in, we snooze, we consciously choose to snooze, right? We choose that. I trust me, I'm a snoozer, I get it. I push snooze all the time. So I get it. So when you consciously choose to push the snooze button, right? You're choosing um, to not do what you say. Then what happens? You think about, okay, I said I was gonna do this, but I didn't do it. Then what starts to happen? Then the self-judgment starts to happen. Then we beat ourselves up. We start to say, I'm not capable of this kind of stuff. I'm not, I'm, I'm not somebody who goes for my goals. I'm, I'm lazy. I'm um, all these things, right? These self-judgment, self-loathing types of conversations that we have with ourselves, right? Can anyone relate to that? Can you guys, can you relate to that? Um, if you can relate to these kinds of conversations that you're having inside of your head, type a three in the chat because that is where we make the mistake. We make the mistake in then putting meaning on the fact that our reptilian brain wants to stay really safe and comfortable, okay? And so as we learn this, right, so now you know this. So now you kind of like, not kind of, you can't unknow this now. Now that you know this, you can't unknow this, right? It's like the matrix, like the red pill or blue pill. Now you know, you hopped on this live, you're listening to me, you're learning, and now you know, you can't not know. So the thing is, is now you know it's your reptilian brain. So now what you can do is you can detach the meaning that you have on this. You can detach this sort of identity that you crave for yourself, which is like lazy and, and um, not confident or you don't feel like you trust yourself in, in achieving goals or you don't want to achieve big goals because you're afraid that you might not reach them, right? You don't want to set goals for yourself because you're like, I don't know, I'm not, I'm, I'm like lazy or I'm not like, I'm not someone who does that, right? So 
you create these counterproductive types of thoughts because those, those thoughts then create an emotion in your body and that emotion is strong. Emotions are very powerful and they dictate our behavior, right? So what you do is first of all, is you take your attention off of these thoughts. So whenever you, you have these kinds of counterproductive thoughts, take your energy, energy away from them. Move on to a different thought. Think something positive about yourself. Think thoughts that serve you. There is no point at all in any circumstance to think thoughts that don't serve you, right? It's great to look at what works and doesn't work, but that's a very neutral position. It's very neutral. It's like, okay, that didn't work. Why didn't it work? It's not an, an emotion. It's not a personality trait. It's like, let me, let me do this again. You look at what worked and what didn't work. It's very neutral, right? Facts are always neutral is what I love to say. Always. So you take your attention, you move your attention off of that. Those counterproductive things, these counterproductive thoughts, these counterproductive meanings that you make it mean for yourself. And then instead, what do you do? You create a positive, um, you, you just, you take yourself off those thoughts. I don't really know where I was going with that last part, but that's it. You take yourself off of those counterproductive thoughts and you, and you focus on something that is productive for yourself and you don't attach the meaning to it, okay? So what is landing for you? I would love, love, love to hear what is landing for you. What do you hear me saying? What do you hear me saying? Um, I love seeing what you guys are hearing and the more you actually participate in this, right? When you actually type out and say what you hear me say, you are actually going to be able to remember it more and you're going to be able to apply it more into your life. So you're making the most of your time here because you might just, if you don't participate, then you're just gonna let something go in and out of your brain and it's not really going to um, really make any change for you, right? So you're basically wasting your time. So, um, so what are you hearing me say? What are you hearing me say? I love, 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 love seeing that. And I know it's kind of delayed. Um, okay, so you guys are gonna write down what you hear me say. And while you do that, um, I'm gonna move on to a few principles that I live by, and I know that they will help you. And so here's the thing is, I'm gonna go through this kind of whole beginning context part, and then I'm gonna go to the three ways of staying consistent. And once you understand these concepts and this whole context that I'm um, setting you up as, and like things to, things like almost like different ways to live by in a new perspective, then these tips are very easy. It's very easy to stay consistent. And you might not believe me right now, but once you start to learn more, then you will really understand um, how this is so easy for you. And then you can become that person that I know you wanna become, right? It's when you make a goal, you set it, you achieve it. Like that is, that's the highest, that's one of the highest selves, to be able to follow through on your word. Um, Okay, so um, here's one principle to remember when you are going into this challenge is number one is you aren't going to be motivated every day. So people are, it seems like people are waiting to be motivated to work out. They're like, I need to be motivated. I need to feel motivated, right? I need to feel motivated. Motivation is a feeling. It's not, uh, it's, it's, it's fleeting, right? Emotions go up and down, up and down, right? Especially like for females and their period, it's like you you have emotions that are all over the place. We can't necessarily, we can't depend on them. We can't depend on them because we don't know what they're gonna be all the time. They are just up and down all the time, right? Um, depending on everything that happens in our life. So knowing that, we can't not, number one, wait for motivation to come to take action. And number two, we can't, uh, depend on motivation for us to take action. So instead, what do you do? So instead of depending on motivation, what do you do? You depend on your commitment. You commit. And it's as simple as that. I think we very, I think we overcomplicate so many things and it's like, well, I didn't feel motivated and all this stuff. And it's like, those are all thoughts and things and you're trying to kind of, you're kind of like trying to, um, like justify why you didn't do what you said you were gonna do, right? But we already know why, because the reptilian brain. But the main thing is then you say, no, I committed to this. I don't care if I feel unmotivated. I'm gonna stick to it and I'm gonna do it. 
And that's what creates change, that's what creates growth, that's what creates the results that you wanna have, right? You're not gonna get any results if you depend on your feelings. You're not gonna get your results you want. Um, the second principle I wanna talk about is that um, just because you have failed in the past doesn't mean that you're going to fail in the future. Our past does not determine our future at all, whatsoever. The past does not determine our future. The, your past does not determine your future. Just because you've tried a challenge, maybe you failed, first of all, it's not your fault because now you understand how the brain works, right? And how he likes to stay comfortable. But now that you know, um, you get to create a different outcome for yourself all the time. And this applies to everything in life. I hear so many girls who are like, oh, you know, I dated a, I dated a cheater, so I'm probably gonna always date a cheater. It's like, well, no, you, <laughs> the way your past is doesn't need to be your future. You get to change that. You get to always change exactly what you want in your life. So just because it happened in the past doesn't mean it's gonna happen in the future. Um, and so just because you may have fallen off a workout plan before, maybe it just wasn't the right plan for you, right? Maybe it wasn't enjoyable for you. Those are great things to find. You know, Those are things you definitely wanna find when you're looking for something consistent. Um, you want to find something, follow a plan, and you want to find something that you really enjoy. If you don't enjoy it, you're not going to show up. So that's that's true for sure. So that's why I say don't beat yourself up if you failed in the past, and that doesn't determine your future either. Okay, and then the third one is <clears throat> we treat ourselves how we perceive ourselves. So here's a little tough love. It is time for you to take yourself seriously, okay? It is really time for you to do what you say you're gonna do and take yourself and your goals seriously. They matter. They really do matter. So the way you perceive yourself, you know, that's how you treat yourself. So take this as an opportunity to treat your goals and what you say seriously. Show up when you say you're gonna show up. Take yourself seriously. Treat yourself with respect. Treat yourself with the way you would treat a best friend, right? That's why having an accountability buddy is so powerful because you wouldn't just flake on your best friend, right? Well, you get to be your own best friend as well. So don't flake on yourself either. So don't flake on your word. Don't flake on your commitment. Don't treat yourself like you would your best friend and talk to yourself you would your best friend. So watch your actions and your language and the things that you say to yourself in your head, okay? So, um, okay, now I wanna ask you, I, wanna, I want you to take a look at your life. Take a look at your life. And now we have this 30-day challenge that we are about to embark on together tomorrow. It is super exciting. It is so, so, so exciting. And I want you to think about your own life. Think about um, you know, these 30 days that are ahead of us. And now, right now, ask yourself, do you believe that it's possible for you to go through these 30 days every day? Do you believe that it's possible for you? Type a yes or no in the chat, okay? So type yes or no below. Even if you're watching the replay right now, you can type yes or no down below, okay? And do you believe it's possible for you to go through these 30 days um, consistently, every day? Yes, yes, says Rebecca. Yes, says Fanny. Yes, says you technician. Yes, says T CT led better. Yes, yes, says Melinda. Mr. Moon, yes, says K again. Yes, so many yeses, Eddie. Yes, okay, awesome. See, that is the first step. All right, and now on a scale of from one to 10, type in the chat um, how committed are you from a one to 10? No, Rach, Rach, no hope so. It's either yes or no. You have to answer yes or no. There's no middle. There's no middle. You can't say maybe, you can't say hope so. You get to choose. You get to choose and be committed or you're not committed, right? Like I once heard you're either you're either pregnant or you're not pregnant, okay, right? There's no like in between of being pregnant, kind of like I'm kind of pregnant. No, you're either pregnant or you're not pregnant, right? Um, so how committed are you? A one to 10. And you get to choose this too. You make up the number. I'm not giving you the number. No one else is giving you the number. You get to give your own number to yourself. So if you wanna achieve these goals, if you wanna feel strong in your legs, if you wanna be toned, if you wanna um, have a consistent fitness routine, if you are looking to like just change your habits and become really consistent in, in everything that you do and committed in your word, then you get to choose the number right now. You get to completely choose the number. It is up to you. 
No one is giving you this number but yourself. So if you say it's a 10, then you get to be a 10. And if it's not a 10, then you get to also look at that. You get to see why am I, what am I cutting myself short? Why aren't I taking myself seriously? If I want to do this challenge, why am I halfway in, halfway out? Right? That's something that you get to look at and see. Okay. So, um, yeah, so take a look at your own life. What would your life look like if you approached everything that you did with a 10? What would your life look like if you believed um, every single goal that you made for yourself was possible? What would your life look like? How would that affect the way you feel in your body, the way you feel about yourself, the way you say the th things you say about yourself, your relationships and things like that? Imagine what that would do for the rest of your life. Okay, so now we're gonna give it, get into the tips, right? So we went through a lot of the context, but a lot of this is really, really important because if we don't understand our brains, if we don't understand our own behavior and what's going on in our brain, there's no point in going over these, these tips because the tips are really simple. And you might've even heard them before, but now with this context and this new lens and perspective, it's gonna be completely different for yourself, okay? The whole game completely shifts. Um, I would get so much more done, said Fanny. Yeah, and so what would do? What would getting so much more done uh, do for your life? Like, what would that look like in your life? Okay, so so here's the thing. Here's step number one. Okay, is um, is is um, publicly like proclaim that you're doing this challenge, right? That's why I have you guys do this. When you sign up for the challenge, you get to download the guide and post that publicly. Cause what does that do? When you post your goals publicly, you are like 10 times more likely to actually uh, follow through all the way. And that is uh, how you keep yourself accountable. So number one is proclaim it publicly. Download that calendar tonight, right now, as soon as this live is over and post it to your social media. Then you are going to invite a couple of friends to join you or found, find an accountability buddy in the Facebook group or get a couple of friends to join you, okay? And commit to each other. Make that accountability. Make that promise to each other. Don't sell out on each other either. If you're like, oh, I was too tired today or whatever, like don't sell out on each other. Say, no, we said that we were gonna do this. Keep each other, like hold each other to each other's goals. Help each other, lift each other up to their highest goals. So don't sell out on each other. Say that you are going to um, see it all the way through. So you say you're afraid that you'll burn out. So what would is so what would so this vi these videos are ten minutes long. Okay, these videos are ten minutes long. So having that fear right of burning out, having that fear is already going to uh, bring in more feelings of fear, right? It's going to bring in more feelings of fear. And just because you have maybe burned out in the past doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to burn out in the future. You don't even really know what this, what this could hold for you, right? That is just taking your focus and focusing on the worst case scenario, right? That is the worst, one of the, not one of the worst case scenarios, right? It's that you burn out. And if you're really in a place, of course, where you're like just sick or something where you're like, my body's just not functioning today, then you take a day off, right? Or you do two in a day and you take a day off or you, t or you catch up or, you know what I mean? I think the idea is what, what, what are you doing to bring your absolute best? And we all know when we are selling out on ourselves and we are just, you know, eating up our own like BS, right? And so focusing on the worst case scenario of burning out, that is the worst case scenario, right? All of the positives, think about every single positive that you can get, confidence, stronger, more resiliency, more committed, more determination, more um, discipline, more motivation, more momentum, maybe connections with the community, right? You get to create this, these healthy habits for yourself. And so focus on what you can gain, okay? Instead of focusing on the possible things that could go wrong, all right? Um, okay, so then the third thing is to pick a time. Pick a time. This is your non-negotiable time that you are going to do the videos and that's when you show up and you do the videos, okay? So again, like I said, the tips are really simple. But understanding your body, understanding your brain, understanding how your brain works is going to completely change the game for you. So number one is um, 
Well, I said this before, but following a plan is going to definitely give you a, a, a way to be consistent, but that's already done for you in this challenge. Number two is to, or another thing is to find something you enjoy, but I know you're gonna enjoy the challenge, so that's already done for you. So the three tips are proclaim this publicly, okay? Post that photo to your social media, um, and then you will be 10 times more likely to achieve your goals when you proclaim it publicly. Number two, is um, to find an accountability buddy. And you know, maybe you can, you can, I like to create both. I like to create rewards, rewards, and I like to create um, things that like, if you don't go on your word, then you have to like, I don't know, pay up somehow with your friend or your accountability buddy. Um, so, you know, those are, those are two ways to keep yourself accountable. It's like with a friend, with someone in the Facebook group, and create a reward system. Right, so you can have something to look forward to, not being food, right? To not, it's not food, but it's like maybe when we're at a quarantine, you get a spa treatment or something like that, or you get to like you have you've had your eye on a new shirt that you wanted to buy, and you get to like buy that shirt. So you get you give yourself like these little rewards. Um, the third thing is to pick a time, pick a time. So that's why in my Stretchy Fit app, you can actually schedule your workouts into the app which is awesome, which is why I did that because it's one of the keys to staying consistent with your routine. Um, so those of you guys who are in the app and get to do the whole challenge within the app, you get to actually schedule it within the app. Otherwise, those of you guys who are doing it not in the app, um, then you would schedule it you know, in your own calendar somehow, okay? So that is everything. Um, so I wanna know what do you guys hear me saying? And I'm gonna, I saw some questions, so I'm gonna roll, scroll back and I'll answer the questions. Um, but yeah, I mean, to recap all of this is to, number one is that, you know, the opportunity here for you to go through this challenge is huge. The opportunity is for you to create this consistency in your routine, to change up your habits, to create this new identity of yourself and ultimately create trust and confidence in yourself. There have been tons of studies that show that when you follow through on your word, that that's when you create trust and confidence in yourself. When you create trust in yourself, you're able to create more trust out there in the world. And that can apply to everything, your career, your jobs, your everything, okay? And then we talked about the brain, about the reptilian brain, how it likes to stay comfortable and um, kind of pull you into your comfort zone always. And so it's not always your fault when you fall back into these old habits. Uh, it's part of the brain system and to not con not attach meaning to it, not attach any sort of name calling on yourself, right? To really be aware of that and, and speak kindly to yourself, okay? And then the other principles were you know, we can't depend on motivation because it's a feeling, so we can't depend on our feelings. We have to um, be committed. That's what we are committed for. Two is that just because you have failed in the past doesn't mean that you're going to fail in the future. You get to create the future that you want to live. And then the other, the other principle is that we treat ourselves how we perceive ourselves. Um, all right, so those are the principles that I like to live by. And then the three tips are, like I said before, Post the pic to the you know to your public social media. Find an accountability buddy and pick a time to work out every single day. One last thing that I would say is have a reason why you're doing this. Right, there are many reasons why. For me, and I love to say that I'm building confidence in myself and trust in myself. Of course, there's all the physical benefits as well. Right, you're going to create strength in your body. You're going to um, improve the tone, muscle composition and the tone of your muscles. So um, what is it for you? Why are you doing that? Have that why. Go seven layers deep, like I always say. Why is this important to you? And make it really, really, really personal for yourself and take some time to really think about it. And that's going to drive you in any goal that you ever make. So these principles can be applied to every single goal you ever make in your life. So I hope you really found this useful. Um, I'm